I kept getting those three mixed up. I thought I knew which one was which, and then I'd get them mixed up. So I'm sorry, girls. You guys can go and sit down for a little bit. We're going to have you guys, come, every, all the kids come up in a little bit to help with some things in about 10 minutes. But before we do that, um, I want to let everybody know kind of the backstory of how VBS came to be this year, the Stars in the Sky theme. Um, for the past three years, we've started kind of writing our own VBS curriculum. We used to buy them, but it, they cost a lot of money, and we usually made so many changes that kind of got, it was frustrating spending so much money to have to do so much work. You know, if you're paying the money, you want to get less work because that's why you're, you're paying them. But then once um, Pastor Kurt and the youth band uh, started doing songs, um, that kind of gave us the little push we needed to start doing our own because... Part of the reason we would buy it is to get the songs, and we didn't need to do that anymore. So um, we, th this was our third year writing our own thing. The last two years, I knew way in advance what we wanted to do. But this year, I just couldn't get a vision for a long time. Usually, it was like January or February. We would start getting everything planned and you know, know what we were doing, make sure our outline was done, start getting crafts ready, all those type of things. Well, it got to be past January, past February, and it got to be April, and I met with some, I meet with the children's pastors from the Hub and from Pine Ridge every couple months. We just kind of get together to talk about life as children's pastors and, you know, pray for each other and that sort of thing. And we start talking about what our, we were doing for Bible school. And I listened to the other two tell all their ideas, and they're like, Jody, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know yet. And they got this very judgmental look on their face, and I can't blame them. <laughs> like, like, how do you not know? I'm like, well, I really feel like God has something he's leading me to, but I just don't know what it is yet. And I, I feel I'm supposed to wait. And I, I could tell they didn't think that was a good idea, but I really felt God was going to tell me something. And that, actually, in February, I started having an idea with something in Philippians 2, which actually has turned out to be what the lesson plan is for kids' college. So in two weeks, I'll let you know how that works out. But for, for VBS, uh, so, somewhere finally in May, I got the idea of, uh, of that we needed to trust. I, part of it with all the waiting and getting anxious about, okay, God, if you're going to um, give me a plan, you need to start doing it. I'm really trusting you here. I'm like, maybe he wants us to talk about trust because I, that's definitely what I've been doing. And uh, then I got thinking about the whole passage in um, Hebrews 11 with the, what yeah, was read earlier about how Abraham was a stranger in other lands. And some translations call that aliens. And so I had, you know, like aliens, Martian type visions going through my head. And then I thought that could get a little too crazy and too off the wall. But then I started thinking about the space theme, and then I got led to the verse um, that was kind of our theme verse for the week that we sang in the um, song about uh, from Psalms 147.4. It says, he counts the stars and names each one. So you start thinking about how big our God is, that he knows all the stars. He named each one of them. And yet we know that Jesus said in Luke 12, 6, and 7, um, he said, when five sparrows are sold, they cost only two pennies. But God does not forget any of them. Yes, God even knows how many hairs are on your head. Don't be afraid. You, have, you are worth much more than sparrow, many sparrows. So if we have a God that knows that much and yet knows that much about details about ours, us and our lives too, then we know that's a God we can trust, don't we? And we've been talking about that uh, week through Abraham, the life of Abraham. So I want to um, show you a video of our Monday's uh, review of Monday's lesson to see the beginning part of Abraham's life. Abram was 75 years old. He had a good life. He loved his wife, Sarai. He had lots of sheep, and he loved God. One day, God told him to leave his home and move to a new country. God said he would make Abram into a great nation. God said Abram would be famous. All the world would be blessed through Abram. Abram trusted God. Even though he had no kids, no idea where he was going, he trusted God's leading. Like Abram, we should listen to God. We can remember God is all-powerful, loving, and true. We can trust God and go where he leads us. One thing, um, if you, uh, hopefully you're aware, but the promise God made to Abraham that his descendants would be like the stars in the sky. And we talked about that a lot this week. That was 
part of the tie-in we had. And um, something that uh, our family was blessed with being able to go to Israel this spring. And one thing that was very interesting that the guide told us is that the tamarisk trees that they have there are actually like natural air conditioners. The roots uh, pull up uh, extra moisture into the leaves. And so when any breeze, it's like releases a lot of cool air in the trees. And um, it's the, it mentions in Genesis chapter 21 that Abraham planted a tamarisk tree at Beersheba. There Abraham prayed to the Lord, the God who lives forever, and Abraham lived as a stranger in the land of the Philistines for a long time. But part of what our guide said um, about the tamarisk tree is that when Abraham uh, planted that tree, that was a sign that he believed that he was going to be able to live there a long time, and not just him, but his whole family, because these trees only grow one inch a year. So is that tree going to get very big in Abraham's lifetime? No. no, not really. He was planning it more as a promise of what was to come. And so the guy talked about how Abraham, they actually, call, he called it Abraham's tree because um, of the, the verse about how Abraham planted one. And so I think that's good for us to remember that Abraham believed God's promises and he trusted God, not only in leaving his land, by, but, but believing God's promises that God was going to give him that land for his descendants and the people after them. And we he, he have Abraham's descendants living there today, this um, even 4,000 years later. So that's pretty cool. So this week, um, my dad, Pastor Keith Porter, was our lesson uh, teacher for the week and mad scientist, as he says, not his words, not mine, <laughs> because he uh, really gets into the space stuff. And so I asked him to come and um, to, uh, talk about uh, some of the amazing stuff about space, outer space in order to give us a bigger, better idea of how big God is and how um, much we should be able to trust him. Abraham uh, trusted God because he was able to look in the stars and realize what big promise God made to, to him. We have even less excuse not to trust God because we have the Hubble telescope and the James Webb telescope that lets us know how incredible the God of the universe really is. I just want to give you some of the information, a little background information about the universe that will kind of... Uh, help you to realize how much we should trust God. The Bible tells us that the God created the universe with just a word. He just said, be, and the universe came into being. And he holds the universe um, together by the word of his power. It says that in Hebrews 1.3 and also in Colossians 1.17. I don't know if you know this or not, but every single day, there are 275 million more stars being created. Every day. That's 100 billion more stars every year. God knows each one by name. If you were to take the time to name the stars, taking only one second to name a star, you could name 31 million in a year. It would take you 125,000 trillion years 125,000 trillion years for you to name the stars that are in existence now. That's losing 240 million stars per year because there's 275 million stars being new created each year. So you could never name them all, even if you took 125,000 million years to try to, trillion years to try to name them all. Scientists tell us that there are two to 10 trillion galaxies. Each galaxy is a, about like the Milky Way. In fact, Milky Way is pretty average as far as galaxies are concerned. The Milky Way has between 100 and 400 billion stars in that one galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is 105,000 light years across. Now, if you're not familiar with the term light year, it's a long ways. We are 93 million miles from our sun. We are 8 minutes and 20 seconds light time away from the sun. In other words, it takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds for the light from the sun to reach us. To give you an idea how far that is, if you were on a jet plane that was traveling 500 miles an hour, it would take you 21 years just to get to the sun. That's only 8 minutes and 20 seconds light time away. The Milky Way galaxy, the one galaxy out of billions and billions of galaxies, our galaxy alone is 105,000 
light years have crossed. If you traveled 186,000 miles per second, it would take you 105,000 years to travel across one galaxy. There are billions and billions and billions of galaxies. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26 says, Lift up your heads, he eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. The sun's core is 15 million degrees Fahrenheit. To give you an idea of how hot that is, if you took a speck of the sun's core, the size of a pinhead, and put it a million, I, I'm sorry, and put it a, a hundred, got to get these numbers straight in my head, put it a hundred miles away. In other words, a pin, pinhead size core of the sun at 15 million degrees, put it a hundred miles away, it would kill you with its heat. That's how hot the sun's core is. And yet, we receive from the sun warmth and energy and light to allow us to have the world in which we live, which is absolutely perfect for human life. Scientists tell us there are 800 individual finely tuned aspects about planet Earth that allow us to have the life that we have here. 800, including gravity, tides, uh, moon, stars, uh, air, water, all those kind of things. 800. The closest other planet that people, that scientists know about, including the exoplanets and other solar systems, the closest other planet only has six of those 800. That's how unique planet Earth is. In fact, scientists tell us that there are over 400,000 different kinds of beetles for our entertainment and enjoyment. 17,500 different kinds of butterflies, 10,000 different kinds of birds, 6,500 different kinds of mammals, 40,000 different kinds of spiders, 9,225,000 9, different kinds of insects, and 400,000 different kinds of flowering plants, all of which God has created for our entertainment and enjoyment to impress us about how much he loves us. In fact, it says in 1 Timothy 6, 17, God lit, richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. God created all this variety for us. Psalm 19, 1 through 3 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Then Romans 1 20 says this. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen and understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. Folks, in the day and age in which we live, we are without excuse in why we don't trust God. And I'd like to encourage you with this. The God of the universe who has made all this just by speaking a word and controls it by the word of his power and created this kind of variety for us. Is he the kind of person you invite into your life to make him your assistant? Anyone with that kind of power, that kind of creativity, that kind of wisdom, that kind of love, you invite into your life to be master and Lord. Thanks, Dad. We have a God who is bigger than we can imagine. We can trust the one who knows everything. That's right. So kids, I'm going to invite you guys to all come up and any kids that are out there are welcome to come up with us. We are going to spend some time up here talking about lots of different things, but we're going to start off. Um, I gave the, asked that all the kids that I knew were going to be here if um, they wanted to sh uh, share like a Bible verse or anything that they learned this week. And everyone that said they wanted to share a Bible verse all chose the same verse. And I could not convince any of them to say a different verse. So I'm going to let, uh, where's it at? Okay. So Clara, you said you want to, and Nora and uh, Clayton all said they wanted to share a verse. Do you guys still want to do that? Okay. We're going to let Nora go first. You want to tell us Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Go and stand up. 
Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Okay, and Clayton wanted to say the same one. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Awesome. Good job, Clayton. And Clara, did you want to say it? Where'd Clara go? Oh, no, no. Do you want to say it? No? Okay. Not today. Okay, no problem. Okay, and also, uh, Atten, did you still want to share something about you learned, what you learned at Bible school? Okay, Atten wanted to share. Abraham trusted God with all his heart. Awesome. Thank you, Atten, for sharing that. So, yes, sure. Dakin wants to say a verse. Luke 18, 27. The things impossible for men are possible for God. And who said that? Jesus. Jesus answered, right? Good job, Dakin. Thank you. Yes, never. I can see it. Can you say trust in the Lord with all your heart? Trust God with all my heart. Good job. Thank you, Maverick. And Clayton, did you want to share something you learned at Bible school? Um, trust God all, um, Jesus' heart with um, people and Mary and God. Thank you, Clayton. Okay, thank you guys for sharing. Um, Everybody else doesn't know, so we're going to surprise them, okay? Oh, let me just, okay, I don't want to sit on you. That's why I'm trying to squeeze in here. Okay, so hey, Gracie. Okay, first of all, oh, might help if I get on the right page. Yeah, I was on the, that's not where we're at, is it? Okay, oops, what did I look, knock over? Okay, uh, we did that. Okay, first of all, I want you guys to help us remember, what are some of the ways that Abraham trusted God? Clayton, what was one of them? Um, trusting God because um, we love him. And how did Abraham trust God? Because he loves him. He did love him. And what did he do, Dakin? He left his country. He left his country. Anybody remember how old he was when he left his country? Nora? 75. He was 75 years old when he left his country. And did he know where he was going at the time? Yeah. No. No, he didn't, did he? And how far did he have to travel? Maverick, do you remember? No? Yes. How, how far did he have to travel? 1,000. Very good. It was 1,000 miles. Nice job, Maverick. And what's another way Abraham trusted God? Let's pass it to Judah. Go ahead, Judah. Almost killed his son. He almost killed his son. Why did God ask him to do that, Finn? So he could trust him? So he could see whether or not Abraham trusted him. Because what did Abraham know God had the power to do? Nora? Raise people from the dead. Raise people from the dead. So that's why he could trust God. And what did God have happen, Clayton? Um, he happened to kill. He told, um, he told, uh, he told Abraham not to kill his son. Yep. When he was all laid out in the altar and tied up, he said, stop, don't do it, right? And very good. And then what did God provide in the bushes, Dakin? A ram. A ram. Good. So he provided a different sacrifice, didn't he? Um, what was something else that Abraham was trusting God for? What did he not get until he was 100 years old, Clayton? Um, he got, he got, um, he got, um, he got an angel. Not an angel. A son. A son. He had to wait till he was 100 to get Isaac, didn't he? So that was another way he trusted God. Well, I want to do a little experiment now to see if, how much you guys trust Miss Jody. Okay? So I have got a tray here. And on this tray, I have two choices. And if any other kids want to come and join us for this, they can. So just a minute, just a minute. So you guys got to hear the directions. So the, sit down, sit down. I can't I'm, you can, you know what's on there. You're right here. How can you not see? I, so, I like those. <laughs> okay, we have chocolate chips. Now, these are her, uh, milk chocolate chips, not semi-sweet chocolate chips. So they are going to taste a lot better, in my opinion, than what 
the ones you bake cookies with are, okay? And then there's also Hershey Kisses. So they're both milk chocolate. What's the only difference between the two that we have on here? Somebody that wasn't here first service. One's yeah. big and one's big. One's big and one's little, right? They're, one's a lot bigger than the other one. Yeah, now, this one's small and this one's big. Yep, this one's small, this one's little. Bi no, this one's small, this one's big, right? Um, medium. Medium, okay. I'll, fair enough. Okay, now I have a deal with you guys. You guys are all going to pick one piece of chocolate. However, Miss Jody really, 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 really encourages you to get the small one, okay? Because I want you to trust me. And we talk, remember how on Thursday we talked about how we need to trust God's blessings? Yeah. I'll give you a hint. Miss Jody wants to bless you, but you have to pick the small one and obey Miss Jody's directions to get the blessing, okay? Yeah. You're just going to have to trust me, and we'll see what happens. Now, okay. Ooh, I love it. Everybody's going for the small ones. Can we eat it yet? You can eat it if you want, as long as you take the small one. If you talk the big one, I want to talk to you a little bit first. Oh, just a minute, Maverick. Maverick, I really want you to take this one. Can you take this one for me? Thank you, buddy. Normally, I don't discourage them, but half the time, kids cry, and I didn't want to risk it. So I don't... <laughs> so, you guys, yes, those that were here for service can do it again. Yeah, you can eat it now if you want, because it'll probably get gross in your hand if you don't. Have you got one yet, Hannah? Yeah. Okay, did everybody get one? Everybody got one? Anybody not get one? I did. You got one, Clayton? Yeah. Okay. Now, guess what I've got over... Uh, can you hand me that bag behind you, Angel? Thank you very much. Now, I've got something to bless all of you with for picking the little one. I've got a fun size. Is this bigger than a Hershey Kiss? Yes. Yes. And now, why can I give this to you? I knew that was going to happen. You knew that was going to happen, didn't you? <laughs> so why are, you, why are you getting the big one now? Well, because we blessed you. Well, I'm trying to bless you, but what did, why am I blessing you? Because you tr trusted, me. trusted me. Very good. Because you guys trusted me, I want to give you guys a blessing of some milk chocolate. Huh? There you go, Owen. Okay. Did I get one? Oh, Maverick, I'm sorry. Here you go, buddy. Yeah, you want me to help you open it? Oh, you want to give it to your mom? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so if you guys have trash, put it in the bag, okay, when you're done. Okay? You want me to take the trash? Now, some of you had, like some of you were saying how you were here first service, and you already knew what was going to happen, right? What are some other ways that some of you knew what was going to happen? What do you think, Clayton? Um, I knew he was going to cut his... Um, son. Okay, that was Abraham, but why, what, regarding the chocolate here, how did you know you should take the small one? Nora? Yes, Hannah. Do you want me to help you? You want to go give it to your mom and dad? Okay, that's fine. Because, for one, I've done this before, and for <laughs> two, I trust you. And number two, what? I trust you. You trust me. I'm glad you trust me. But where, where have you done this before? Me. Uh, Nora? Junior church. Not junior church, in kids club, right? Yeah. And how many times in kids club have you done it? Like three. Probably around three. And we do this every year in kids club because, and not that I want you to get to trust me, but I want you to be thinking about how the more we get to know God, we know we can trust him. So every year of your life, I hope you'll trust God more and more and more. And some of you, when you were in kindergarten, the first time you, we did this, you did not get the, the uh, little chocolate chip. You got the Hershey Kiss. And then you missed out on the blessing, didn't you? And the people that have that happen, do they usually do it the next year? No. no the next time they know to get the small one because they know what's going to happen. Well, the same is true with our relationship with God. The more we get to know him and the more we learn how he's going to take care of everything, the more we can trust him. The next time hard times come, we say, okay, God, I know you want me to do it this way. I'll, I'll trust you. You know what? God tells us a lot of hard things to do. He tells us that we're not supposed to be selfish. He tells us we're supposed to do everything without grumbling or complaining. He tells us we're supposed to love our enemies and we're supposed to pray for those who hurt us. Those are hard things, aren't they? It's pretty easy to avoid killing people and avoid stealing and stuff like that. But it's really hard to not grumble or complain. It's really hard to obey our mom and dads all the time. And all those things are really hard. But who's there to help us out? 
Clayton? God. God is. That's right. And if we keep remembering that, keep remembering how big and powerful and say, oh, God really wants the best for us. I know I should do things God's way. Same as Jesus, because Jesus is God, isn't he? Very good. He's almost God, but he's he is God. Jesus. He is called Jesus, but he's, he's God too, isn't he? He's, it's kind of confusing. It's Jesus Christ, God. Jesus Christ, God. You are correct. Okay, let's go ahead and think about, I want to switch gears a little bit now. And in those of you that have come to junior church in the past, like, seven weeks, who have we been talking about? Finn. Solomon. We've been talking about Solomon. Um, can you do me a favor and hand that box of Kleenex is around? If you think you have chocolate on your face, if you want to take one of those, because we're getting some piggy faces up here. Okay, we've been talking about uh, King Solomon, and what do we know about King Solomon? Do you know Clayton? Anything about King Solomon? Can I borrow you know? Yes. No. no? Judah, what do you know about King Solomon? He had, he worshipped other gods. He worshipped other gods. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad, bad, bad thing. thing. Why did he do that? Does uh, anybody remember Hannah? Because he had too many wives. He had too many wives. How many wives did Solomon have? Um, Judah? 2, you were close, Clayton. He had 1,000. 1,000 wives. How many, too many wives is that? Um, a lot. A lot. 999. 999. Too many wives, isn't it? He, how many wives are you supposed to have? One. One, right? And Solomon had a thousand. And God said, don't marry women from other countries and don't just try to marry people to get alliances because then you're going to be tempted to worship their gods instead of staying fo focused on me. But Solomon didn't do that. Even though what was the one special thing that Solomon did right when he was younger? What did he do? Nora? He asked God for wisdom instead of the other things. Very good. He did ask God for wisdom. So he had some moments where he was doing a good job trusting God. But unfortunately, he didn't always do that. Yes, Clayton. Um, he even tried to, he even, um, uh, he even, um, uh, he even. Can I tell you something he did? I know what he did. <laughs> What did he um, do? He, he um, trusted God. He trusted God when he was younger, but he didn't always trust God, did he? In fact, in First Kings... He didn't want that much um, wives. Yeah, he had too many wives, didn't he? In First Kings 11, 4, it says, As Solomon grew old, his wives caused him to follow other gods. He did not follow the Lord completely as his father David had done. Now, was David perfect? No. No. What are some of the bad things David did? Nora? Tell us one. He had seven wives. Well, he did have seven wives, so he messed up there too. What was something else bad that happened? He killed someone's husband and then married her. Good. He, he committed murder. And what else? Clayton, do you know something bad King David did? Um, he, he tried to kill his son. Um, he didn't try to kill his sons. His sons tried to kill him, but he, he, I don't think he ever tried to kill his sons. Um, he made... Wait, no... And before he um, did the murder, he committed adultery, right? So David did a lot of bad things. However, David always said he was sorry and always turned back to God. Do we know of David ever worshiping another fake God besides the real God? No. no. His heart was always focused on God. And as soon as he realized he messed up, he was super sorry and apologized to God and said he was sorry. And that's why we want to do things like uh, David did. And then... Um, First Samuel fifteen twenty two. It talks about how that we should uh, that God values our obedience more than He does sacrifices. It says Samuel said, "What pleases the Lord more, burnt offerings and sacrifices or obedience?" What do you guys think? Obedience. Obedience. That's right. It's, Samuel said, "It is better to obey God than to offer a sacrifice. It is better to listen to God than to offer a, the fat of a male sheep." And what do you guys think? One of the reasons maybe is that. Uh, Solomon started doing all these bad things instead of keeping his focus on God and trusting God's wisdom. Nora, what was maybe a reason why he started doing things his own way? Because when he got older, his wives... Yeah, he followed his wives instead of... Yeah, what else, Judah? He, he was super, super rich. He got super, super rich, and maybe he started... Relying on his money instead of God. What else, Finn? He had so much horses. He got a lot of horses, even though God said not to get so many horses, especially from Egypt, and he, he got some from Egypt. What else, Clayton? A lot of sheep. He, he probably had a lot of sheep. 
We didn't talk about that part as much, but you're probably right. He's probably like Abraham in that way, wasn't it? And I think one of the reasons is because Solomon got to be very prideful. And, 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 and it's kind of ironic that he wrote in Proverbs 29, 23, it says, a man's pride will ruin him, but a person who is humble will be honored. And last week we talked about how God was even going to take the whole part of the kingdom away from uh, Solomon's family. So, because remember, Solomon was David's son, and they weren't going to be able to be king of all 12 tribes anymore. They were going to only be the, tri- uh, uh, the king over Judah, and we're going to start talking about that more next week. So, we need to remember that we have a big God, a God who is bigger than we can imagine, and we can trust the one who knows how much? A lot. Everything. He doesn't know a lot, but he knows everything, right? Okay, I want to talk a little more about Abraham's life now. Who can remember some of the ages Abraham was on, on the things we talked about? Nora, tell us one age he was about something you know, an important event in his life. 99. What happened well, when he was 99? Who visited him? Three angels. Three angels came and visited him and told him in one year he was going to what? Have a son. Son, good. So what happened when he was 100, Clayton? Um, he... He, um, he, he tried. Who was he, born when he was 100? Um, his son. His son, Isaac. And what happened when he was 75? Judah. He had to move. That's when he moved, wasn't it? Very good. Well, um, um, did you guys know that Abraham uh, lived with Sarah until Sarah was 127 and Abraham was 137 and then Sarah died? But then Abraham actually got remarried. And we don't talk about that part very often. But I want to go ahead and let Lauren come up now. And she's, you guys stay here. And we're going to let Lauren come up. And she's going to read our message text today. And we want to hear about some of the other ways Abraham was blessed. So we're going to ask Lauren to read um, from, I miss, lost it. What is it? From <laughs> Genesis chapter 25, verses 1. Then 5 through 8, because we're skipping the hard names, and then verse 11. And so we're going to, Lauren, if you're able, please stand. You guys can all stand with us while uh, Lauren reads the Bible verses, okay? Abraham married again. His new wife was Ketra. She gave birth to six sons mentioned in verse 2. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. But before Abraham died, he did not give gifts to the sons of his other wives. Abraham sent them to the east to be away from Isaac. Abraham lived to be 175 years old. He breathed his last breath and died at an old age. He had lived a long and satisfying life. After Abraham died, God blessed his son Isaac. Isaac was now living at Beer Lahai Roy. You may be seated. Okay, did you guys catch how many more kids he had after, after that? Go ahead and sit down, guys. Did you guys catch how many more sons Abraham had with his second wife? How many was it, Clayton? Um, two. More than two. Can I sit? Uh, you guys aren't leaving me a seat. More than five. Six. six. That's right. He had six more sons. Did anybody catch how long Abraham lived? How old was he when he died? How old, Dickon? 175. 175. Very good. And do you guys know that he actually got to see his grandkids? Jacob and Esau were born when Abraham was 160. You got it. 160. And then, they, so that means they were 15 years old when Abraham died. Is that a pretty big blessing? Yup. Yeah. They, a really big blessing. Really big blessing. Because Abraham was 100 when Isaac was born. He was glad just to have a son. I bet he never expected to see his Bigger grandkids. Bigger than anything. Bigger than anything? Grandparents would probably agree with you. I'm like, I've uh, heard that's pretty exciting. My mom. Well, your mom and dad aren't grandparents yet. <laughs> but they're blessed to have you, aren't they? So we need to remember that about all the blessings God's given us, and that helps us to trust him, doesn't it, guys? We are not going to play games, but we are going to do reflection time. Yes, Hannah? You did? Oh my goodness. Okay, we are going to have reflection time now with the adults, guys. So can you guys help me pass out some papers? I know. I um, can. Okay, that, Judah's going to help. Go ahead, Judah, get them because I'm having a hard time getting out here. Okay, yeah, you and Judah are going to go up to the balcony. Okay, have, give half of those to Logan, please. Cause he's, no, you get, go, just help in the sanctuary here. So spread them out, guys. Okay. Here. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so we, every day during Bible school, one of the things we did, sorry, I ran out. 
uh, is have a reflection time where the kids just went to room and they were quiet for a little bit and they could think about what they'd learned in the Bible story and during the lesson and just have some quiet time to be alone with God. So we thought that'd be a good thing to do during the service today and give everybody a chance because we talk about how you need to do this a lot, but we very rarely, especially corporately, take time to do that. So we're going to go ahead and the kids are passing the papers out. Um, this is just a guide. You don't have to do the questions. This isn't going to be graded or collected or anything. This is just for you to give you something to start with. If you don't like any of the questions there, that's fine. And um, we are just going to spend a few minutes to be quiet. If you still need a paper, if you can raise your hand and the kids will help. There's, we need another one up here, guys. Kayleen, we need, have another. Oh, never mind. Finn, Finn you got it? Okay. Anybody else missing one? Okay. Oh, back here, guys. Okay, and then make sure all the kids get one. So we're going to go ahead and have some music going on in the background. And I'm going to read through the questions just so you have an idea where we're at with timing. And um, we're going to spend some time talking to God. Oops. Here you go, Gary. So first of all, we have a God bigger than we can imagine. We can trust the one who knows everything. When is it easy to trust God? When is it difficult? Psalms 147, 4 says, He counts the stars and names each one. Think about this first. What does this tell you about God? What has stood out to you regarding the Bible characters we have talked about today? Abraham, King David, King Solomon. Spend some time talking to God. Ask him to help you trust him. What can you do to help you remember what a great God we have? Lord, we thank you so much for being so big and powerful. Thank you for caring about us, even though we're so insignificant compared to you. Help us to uh, trust you. Help us to believe in you. Help us to uh, worship you for who you are. Help us to remember your greatness and put our trust in you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.